Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Mr. James Hilton in Hair to Powley's The Story of Silent Night on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, Mr. James Hilton. Before we begin, here is a Christmas message from the folks at Hallmark and the friendly stores where Hallmark cards are sold. A special Hallmark Christmas card from all of us to all of you that comes with real sincerity and brings our friendly greetings, too. So, to the wishes you've received, please add our wish for Christmas cheer. And by the way, it's sure been grand to have you with us through the year. And now it is Hallmark's pleasure to present the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we tell you the story of how that wonderful Christmas song, Silent Night, came to be written 130 years ago. This story was told recently to a writer named Hertha Pauli by the grandson of the man who wrote the music of Silent Night. year of our Lord, 1948. 1,948 years from the miracle of Bethlehem. Christmas, the birth date of the Prince of Peace, the birth date of hope and faith, the birth date of a miracle. In Bethlehem, three kings knelt and proffered gifts from the east. Since Bethlehem, many gifts, recorded and unrecorded, have been created of man's love of God and humbly offered in his honor. What you are to hear tonight will tell you of one such gift offered by two humble men 130 years ago this Christmas week. This, too, is the story of a miracle that was born one silent night. We are going back now through the arches of the years, back 130 Christmas Eves, to meet a man named Joseph Moore, Father Joseph Moore. Those voices you can just barely distinguish are all voices that have said Merry Christmas through the years. Their sentiment remains and lingers on the Christmas air like a blessing. And now we are in the Austrian Alps, in a small village. The year is 1818. In the center of the town, near a swift flowing stream, stands a whitewashed church with a tall red-topped steeple. There are the church bells. They have a special joyousness tonight, as all church bells seem to have on Christmas Eve. Come now, we'll meet Father Moore. He's in his study, and his heart's a little heavy. Because the church organ has broken down and there'll be no music for the Christmas service. Good evening, Father Moore. Oh, good evening. Uh, Come in, come in. You don't know me, Father, but I'm in your parish. I've come from one of the charcoal makers' families. A child has been born to them tonight and they beg that you come and bless the baby that it may live and prosper. Uh, Have I time to go and return for my sermon? Yes, Father. Well, then I'll go at once. And so it was that on Christmas Eve of the year 1818, 
Father Joseph Moore followed a woman up the rocky foothills of the Alps to a simple hut and blessed a baby on Christmas Eve. It seems like a miracle that her child should be born this night. Birth itself is a miracle. God has blessed her with a beautiful son on the most holy night of the year. And God has blessed me by guiding me here. Father Moore walked down the snowy mountain, transfixed, transfigured. He thought of the baby and of the sacred night, and words began to stir and form themselves within him. Holy night, silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child. Round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. How simple is the coming of a miracle to a stable in Bethlehem, to the heart of a man. After Father Moore had solemnized the Mass, he sat all night in his study, writing down the words that filled his heart. And when dawn came, he took the poem he had written to Franz Gruber. Father, this is a fine poem. I, I rather heard it as a song, Franz. I thought you might set it to music. Thank you, Father. I should like to try. And so the words that Father Moore had heard on Christmas Eve became music to Franz Gruber on Christmas Day. And before nightfall, he came to Father Moore's house. I've uh, written the music, Father. I wrote it for guitar and voice rather than the organ. After all, we have no way of knowing when the organ can be used. Please sing it. Let me hear it. Silent night, holy Austrian province lies a valley, the Zillertal, and from the Zillertal, a few days after Christmas, came the organ builder, Karl Mauracher. Well, now, Father Moore, Mr. Gruber, I think I have the organ in working order now. The mice had eaten holes in the bellows, but this leather patch should solve all your problems. May I try it? Well, go ahead. <laughs> song before, Father. Franz and I wrote it at Christmas. I've never heard a song like it. Would you teach it to me? 
I know people would like to learn it down in the Zillertal. We'll be happy to teach it to you. Won't we, Franz? We will be honored. And so the hymn that was born on Christmas night started its journey out into the wide world. Karl Moraka took the song down into the Zillertal. Silent Night was on its way from a small church high in the Alps to the cathedrals of the earth. children in the Zillertal loved to sing, and they all sang well. But of them all, the ones with the most beautiful voices were the four Strasser children, Caroline, Joseph, Andreas, and Amelie. And the organ builder worked painstakingly to teach them the song. On Christmas Eve, they stood in the doorway and sang it as a Christmas gift for their parents. So Wonderful Christmas gift. You sang that beautifully. I'm proud of you. The organ builder taught it to us. Thank you, Mr. Maraca. I, I hoped in the spring when Mr. Strasser takes the gloves to sell at the fair in Leipzig, uh, perhaps he would find a way for you to sing the song there. Sing at the fair? We aren't good enough to do that. We could never do it. Why do you want them to sing the song there, Mr. Maraca? Well... To me, this song is almost like a song from heaven. The words came to Father Moore on Christmas Eve. The melody to the schoolmaster, Gruber, on Christmas Day. They gave it to their parish, and then it was given to me to carry down into the valley of the Zillertal. I, in turn, give it to you to take to Leipzig. Someone in Leipzig will take it on the next step of its journey. Where is it going? <laughs> Who knows, little Amelie? Perhaps everywhere. But who in Leipzig? I don't know that either. But someone will make him or herself known to you, and the song from heaven will go on across the earth. Will you take it to Leipzig and send it on its way? Oh, yes. Of course we will. <laughs> are you children? They are my children, sir. I'm Strasser from the Zillertal. This is my glove stand. We're here at the fair to sell chamois gloves. Your children have beautiful voices, Mr. Strasser. Yes. They sing every afternoon and the people stop to listen to them just as you saw today. And do they also buy the gloves? Yes, I think it helps business. In any case, it does not harm it. It was their song that caught my attention. The song, sir? Yes, I have never heard it before. My name is Polenz. I am the Director General of Music in the Kingdom of Saxony. The Director General of Music? Yes. I wanted to ask you children if you would care to appear at a concert one of these days. A concert? Oh, that would be terrible. I'm afraid they aren't experienced enough, Mr. Polenz. We must do it. We promised Mr. Morocco we've got to do it. It doesn't matter if we aren't good, as long as we sing it. We'll... We'll be happy to sing at a concert, Mr. Pollens. Well, we may not be happy, but we'll do it. Good. Next Tuesday, then, at the Gavant House, there will be an orchestra concert. Perhaps at the close of the concert, you will honor us with this song. The king and queen will be there. The king and queen? <laughs> The 
Your Majesty. Your Highness. We are honored. Honored? Well, children, don't look at the floor. Look at us. We want to see your faces. I think they have a slight case of fright, Your Majesty. We don't want you to be afraid of us. We have children just about your age. Mr. Polins has told us you sing a wonderful song that you call a song from heaven. We're looking forward to hearing it. If we just didn't have to sing it before all those people. Now, some of them are the same people you sang it for at the fair. Uh, Your Majesty, it's almost time for the concert to start. Uh, with your permission. Just close your eyes, children, and pretend you're singing at home. Queen smiled and listened, and listening with them was the director of the Berlin Cathedral Choir. It was he who heard the song in Leipzig and took it on the next step of its journey to Berlin and the court of the emperor. In a moment, James Hilton will return to bring you the second act of The Story of Silent Night. You have been so busy buying gifts for others, now let me tell you about a Christmas present for you from the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. It's a Hallmark date book. I have one in my hand now, and what a little beauty it is, from the colorful camellia on the cover to the last pink and white page in the book. It's just the right size to tuck away in your purse or keep beside your telephone, and so useful you'll always be referring to it. Just inside the cover, there's a place for your name and a list of important dates, like Easter and Mother's Day. Turn the page, and there's a calendar for January 1949, with a space beside each date for jotting down things to remember, social engagements, appointments, anniversaries. There's also room for names and addresses of people you'll want to remember during January. And so, for every month of the year, right through to December. You'll find it especially valuable right now because at the back of the book, there's a place for your next year's Christmas card list, room for names and addresses, and an easy way to mark Christmas cards sent and cards received. You'll find so many uses for this handy Hallmark date book. Why not get your copy right away? It's yours without obligation, a Christmas gift to you from the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of The Story of Silent Night. voices are the men of the Berlin Cathedral Choir singing for the Emperor on Christmas Day. There's the Emperor in the royal pew singing with them. No, he stopped singing. Look at his face. He's glaring at that hymn book. What do you mean you don't know who wrote that song? Are you my concertmaster or are you not my concertmaster? Well, I, I am your concertmaster at the moment, sire. Well, look at this hymn book. Just look at this page. What does it say? Sire... Silent Night. And what else does it say? Author and composer unknown. I want to know who wrote that hymn. Concert Master, you've spoiled my whole Christmas. The trees, the gifts, even the dinner. If a thing is unknown, I wish it made known. I want order in my hymn book. I want it as soon as possible. You would start out today in search of the name of the composer of Silent Night. Yes, sir. <laughs> And so it was that concertmaster Ludwig Erk started out to trace the origin of Silent Night. He went to big cities, he went to small villages. He talked to the young, to the old. Long, worrisome months kept pace beside him. And at last, 
Even though he knew what he had to face in the anger of the king, he knew he had to give up. He sat alone and disconsolate in a small village inn near the Austrian border. Will there be anything else, sir? No, no, that'll be all. Oh, hush. You don't like the bird's song, sir? The bird? Well, I, I thought it was my own mind. But that's the song I've been hunting for. Who taught it to him? I don't know, sir. A traveler sold him to us. The man said he had bought the bird in Salzburg in St. Peter's Abbey. Salzburg? Well, then, I, I shall go to Salzburg. To Salzburg, to St. Peter's Abbey, which had been built a thousand years after the birth of Christ. Concertmaster Erk walked through a dark, pillared archway into a vaulted room and stood where Father Joseph Moore had stood so many times in the years gone by. A silent night? No, I have no recollection of it. How did you happen to come to us, sir? I heard a bullfinch sing the tune, Father. The innkeeper told me the bird came from this abbey. No, we, we don't allow any of our students to train songbirds here. Uh, we consider it a cruel practice to deprive God's creatures of their freedom. I see. Well, perhaps it was a mistake. Oh, come, it's late. Uh, have some dinner with us and then spend the night. Yes? Ow, oh, you're hurting my ear. Well, what is this? Uh, here come Ambrosius Prinsteiner, the choir inspector here at the Abbey. And this is young Felix Gruber. Oh, my ear. I'm going to tell my father on you. I was told about your inquiries concerning the bullfinch. This young rascal trained him. You trained him? It didn't hurt the bird. Uh, where did you learn that song that you taught him? The song? You heard the gentleman, the song. My father wrote it. Your father? Yes, sir. Where is your father? In the village of Helene. Helene? Mr. Prenstein, do you think you could arrange for this boy to have a day or two off so I could go with him to Helene? Well, you'll have to talk to the abbot, but I'm sure it can be arranged. And now young Felix Gruber and concertmaster Eric are tucked in a fine sleigh behind a team of the abbey's finest horses. The bells sing out gaily across the clean, crisp air, and the snow crunches under the horses' hooves. Now they are going through the pass above Helene, and now they are skimming down the main street to the market square before the church, and now they are pulling up before the small, friendly house which is the home of Franz Gruber. And so it was at last. Concertmaster Erk sat with the composer of Silent Night. Mr. Gruber, I bring you and Father Moore the compliments of the king and the whole country. Well, well. Father Moore is dead. God rest his soul these six years past. Oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Yes, he was a fine man. Uh, do you have all six stanzas to the song? No, we have only four. <laughs> Felix, hand me the guitar, please. Here, Father. Silent night, holy night, falling forth all the might of our Father's love and grace as Jesus So the words and the facts are taken down, and above the music will be the names Gruber and Moore. Concertmaster Erk walks out through the snow after dinner, and as he walks, he looks up at the snow-covered Alps that Father Moore loved. And Franz Gruber watches him from the window and wishes regretfully that Father Joseph Moore had been here to see his song brought back in triumph to the village of Halim. journeyed back 
130 Christmas Eves to meet a man named Father Joseph Moore and the school teacher, Franz Gruber, and Karl Mauracher, the organ builder, and the Strassers, and all the rest who had a part in carrying the song from a village high in the Alps down into the world. Yes, now it has bridged 130 Christmas Eves. Now it has been sung by the old and the young, the rich and the poor. It has been sung in every language, in every country of the world. It has become a prayer, a prayer that men can live together in one world as brothers, and that there be indeed peace on earth, goodwill toward men. You have heard the story of a miracle, a miracle that was born one silent night. Before James Hilton returns to tell you about our story for next week, I'd like to tell you about Hallmark New Year's cards. They're as bright and gay as a New Year's party. They're a thoughtful expression of friendship, and they're the best way I know to remember someone you may have overlooked when you sent your Christmas cards. Remember, these are Hallmark cards. When friends receive them and glance at the back, as you did, they'll see the Hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. The story of Silent Night and the music you have just heard has all the beauty and joy and happiness of Christmas. There's nothing anyone can add to it. But I would like to introduce the man who's responsible for the splendid music you've just heard. I know you'd like to meet him because so many of you have written us to praise his music. He's Lynn Murray, the musical director of the Hallmark Playhouse, whose work contributes so much to the success of our performances every week. Lynn, I personally want to thank you not only on my own behalf, but for all our Hallmark people everywhere for helping to make our playhouse musically outstanding. Thank you very much, Jimmy. You know, I enjoy working with you and all the rest of the people here. It's very satisfying to be with people who are always working toward perfection. But I suppose that's quite natural when you realize that our sponsors are the people who make Hallmark cards. You know, Jimmy, writing music for a dramatic presentation has a parallel in the making of greeting cards. In our work, we try to compose the exact music to fit the story that is being told, to underline every mood, character, and change of scene. And Hallmark greeting cards always seem to express the fitting sentiment for every occasion. And by the way, I want to ask our audience to be sure to listen next week when we will dramatize your own book, Lost Horizon, with one of Hollywood's finest actors, Herbert Marshall. And the following week, it'll be our pleasure to present Louis Bromfield's McLeod's Folly, starring Robert Young. And now for all of us here in the Playhouse, for our director-producer, Dee Engelbach, for Jean Holloway, who dramatized tonight's story, for the Hallmark dealers whom you see in your own cities, for everyone who is proudly a member of the Hallmark family, we wish you, our friends, a very, very Merry Christmas. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Herbert Marshall in Lost Horizon and the following week McLeod's Folly starring Robert Young. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.